Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here, RemotePilot101.com. Now, with a look at not only one of the great missteps in the history of unmanned American UAVs, but uh, inviting you to zip into their future. You know, it's that childhood fantasy as we all shared the flying car. I still want a flying car. It's not a childhood fantasy. I'm a grown man and I still want a flying car. I think it'd be super cool. I want to be able to control it though. I was just talking to John off camera about that. I want to be able to control it, but that doesn't make it a unmanned flying car anymore, does it? Anyways, there's some cool things happening in this seemingly crazy upside down world that we're in um, right now. In a virtual event on April 27th, the US Air Force kicked off uh, Agility Prime, a new effort to finally create what they're calling a flying car for commercial and military use. Sounds cool, I'm interested. So according to Will Roper, the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Acquisition, the goal of Agility Prime is to avoid that cautionary tale in the rollout of this that we call this kind of white whale technology. You know, early in the development of the personal drone technology, the Pentagon effectively sat on the sidelines, kind of failing to engage companies to build the actual systems. So as a result, the supply chain, we know, kind of zipped over to China, which now dominates the drone market. But again, we are working to fix that. We, I know we posted that video a few weeks ago on Chinese drones. That's something I hope my entrepreneurs out there are listening and watching and coming up with an idea to bring our drone technology back to America, at least the private sector side of it. So with Agility Prime, the Air Force is working directly with companies, companies actually of all sizes, to start the development of electric or hybrid vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Now, this, the Air Force, they can use for mobility missions and eventually adopt even broader, maybe, uh, American public transportation. No word yet on uh, flux capacitor technology, though, if you're curious about that one. That's still, that's, that's coming, though. Still, Roper insists this new type of aircraft represents a truly transformative leap ahead in modern transportation. For the Air Force, small commercially produced aircraft can help with special operations, their missions, search and rescue, point-to-point uh, -point logistics even, and defense and support to civil authorities in their missions. For us, it's just going to be super cool to go fly somewhere for lunch. That's what I'm hoping to really utilize it for in the private sector. So the first solicitation for this process calls for vehicles with the capability to carry three to eight people at speeds greater than 100 miles per hour at a range of more than 100 miles and with an endurance of about one hour. So the service wants the first full-scale flights by December 17th with the goal of small operational fleet by 2023. That's like right around the corner when you think about it, right? This is coming up quick here. Again, I'm, I'm proud that we're trying to bring some of this great technology back to America. This is opposed to the traditional procurement processes that we're used to hearing with, where much of the interaction between the service and the contractor comes solely from just the transfer of money and requirements. This time around, the Air Force really wants to be active in the development through its use of testing ranges, uh, having engineers actively assisting with safety issues, development and regular use of new technology within the Air Force. It's all meant in turn to build confidence in these systems. The Air Force, we know, has a deep history, uh, training and flight uh, certification. According to Brigadier General uh, Clinton Hinote, uh, Deputy Director of the Air Force War Fighting Integration Capability. It's a pretty cool title. Uh, there's no better place in the world to think about these things and work through these issues. During the week-long Agility Prime virtual conference, speakers from the Air Force, the Department of Transportation, the FAA, uh, Defense Innovation Unit as well, individual companies, even and lawmakers, they discuss the goals and development of these eVTOL, so electric vertical takeoff and landing systems, and their expected acquisition process. Air Force Secretary Barbara Barrett uh, insists Agility Prime will change the game in future battlefields and supply chains, further asserting that the sky is not the limit, it is truly just the beginning, which sounds like time travel in a way to us now, doesn't it? The event culminated with the first ever flying car virtual trade show, pretty cool, and unveiling of new aircraft on May 1st with 57,000 people tuning in online. Saberwing Aircraft Company, which received a $3.25 million contract through the Air Force Agility Prime program, unveiled its Regal A. Uh, according to the company release, the production of the model, the, the Regal, will have a capacity of flying 5,400 pounds of payload to and from locations without any runway, bringing tons of cargo to the most remote parts of the world. 
has a range of 1,000 nautical miles, altitudes of 22,000 feet, and speeds of up to 200 knots. That sounds pretty cool. In addition to that, it can also take off and fly like a conventional aircraft, taking off from one airport and landing at another uh, with a payload of 10,000 pounds if we go the traditional using a runway route. The aircraft uses electric motors uh, to turn fans with ducts that provide lift during takeoff and landing, but uses a main wing to provide lift during cruise flight. So, again, the U.S. military learned a hard lesson, and now we get a dream toy. This is pretty cool. But will the U.S. markets catch up in the personal UAV space? I, I, I certainly hope so. Uh, and again, entrepreneurs watching, you, you get our updates. There's so many great opportunities out there. We are on the brink of something great. This is certainly just the beginning. I'm excited to see where you all uh, take it. So can't wait to read your comments below this video on Facebook, on YouTube, on RemotePilot101.com. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you. Remote Pilot 101 is the most successful Part 107 test prep course on the market with over 18,000 tests passed. It's one price and you get our updated initial and brand new recurrent course for life. It's two courses for the price of one and it's for life. See the actual test questions, learn the material, take the practice quizzes all at your own pace through our easy videos you've already grown to love. Visit RemotePilot101.com to become a member for life and learn more.